Good morning. Welcome at the Durham Club Family Church's 1030 English service. It is a privilege to be here with you. But I'm also looking forward to a time that we will get together in person again. But no matter where you are this morning, or what your circumstances are, I believe that God is with you. That in this moment, He is with you through His Spirit. And therefore I can greet you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May you experience His presence this morning. May you be aware of Him. And may you grow in your relationship with Him. Now friends, if you want to take a moment to just uh, sit in the presence of God, to be aware or become aware of Him, take a moment to pause this video. You could also light a candle as a symbol of God's light in your life. Jesus says that He is the light of the world. And we can just become aware of, of the fact that He lights up all, even the darkest parts of our lives. That we can give everything to Him. That we can bring all our troubles to Him. And that He will kindly and gladly spend this time with you. So let us think about what we believe in. Let's confess our faith by singing the creed. Yeah. 
Let's close our eyes in prayer. Lord, we want to thank you that we can be here in your presence this morning and that we know that you are with us and that you love us and that by confessing these words that we are not alone, that we are joined by millions and billions of people across the world. Lord, we ask that you will help us live our faith in such a way that we will bring honor to your name. That when those that do not believe or those that do not know you, when they, when they see or hear us, that they will get to know you. That they could see you through us. We therefore ask you to forgive our sins as well for those times that we did not bring honor to your name. And we ask you to, to show us how to live how to be true to our calling. We pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name above all names. Amen. So friends, today we're going to talk about Jonah. So if you could pause the video and speak to the people around you and ask them what they know about Jonah, what would it be? Most people would think about, or nearly everybody probably that knows about Jonah, would first think about the big fish that swallowed Jonah. The other thing they could say was that he ran away from God. So if you read the book of Jonah carefully, you would get to know a few things about this guy. Maybe things that are not so good. Some character flaws. The first thing is, he lived in fear. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says that we have not been given the spirit of fear. That when we are called to God, if we are called by His name, that we should live in such a way that, that, that we trust in Him as well. And that is something that Jonah did not do. He lived in fear. But he also seriously disliked some other people. You could say he was very xenophobic. When God saved the Ninevites in the end, he, Jonah, was very upset that God saved them. But there's good reasons, you could say, for the things that he did, for the character flaws that he had. So at the beginning of the book of Jonah, God sends him to Nineveh. Then Jonah runs away. Why? Because the Ninevites were bad guys. They were the evil empire that crushed Israel and took them away into slavery, into exile. They were an absolutely ruthless people, destroying all that opposed them. They were extremely nationalistic. So somebody once said that for Jonah to be, to be going to Nineveh, which is the which is the capital of Assyria, the bad people. For Jonah to go to Nineveh was like a Jew having to go to Berlin in the middle of the Nazi rule and preach to them. Obviously, he wouldn't want to go. No wonder he was afraid. And no wonder he didn't want to save the people of Nineveh. So, if I had to put myself in his shoes, I would probably also be angry at them and would not want God to save them. Are there also people like that in your life who you would like to punish? People that has hurt you? Would it be justified for them to be punished by God? Justified um, by your measure? Would you also be afraid to go into the middle of a group of dangerous enemies? Of all, of all these things, in all these things, I would probably also do as Jonah did and run away. So let us review the story uh, up to the point where we, where we will join it in Scripture. So God called Jonah to go and warn the people of Nineveh of God's pending punishment. And then Jonah tries to run away. 
he runs away from the calling that God has for him. He gets on a boat and it takes him in the opposite di direction, away from the living. And while he's on the ship, a big storm brews and uh, it's sent actually by God to stop Jonah. And the sailors figured out that it was because of Jonah that this uh, unnatural storm hit them. And then they turned to God. And Jonah tells him to throw him in the water and by that way the storm will calm down. So they do it. And then God sends a fish. And the fish swallows Jonah and spits him out three days later. And this is where we meet up with Jonah in the story. So let us read Jonah 3 verses 1 to 5 and then verse 10. It says the following. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. And Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, Forty more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. And then verse 10. When God saw what they did, and how they turned from their evil ways, He relented and did not bring on them the destruction He had threatened. So friends, when we read this, we can learn a few things about God. We have already learned a few character flaws about Jonah, but now we will learn some good things about God. The first is that God is patient with us. God gives Jonah the same assignment. Now he doesn't tell Jonah that he has failed and is not good enough. He doesn't order the fish to swallow him and keep him down there in the water forever. He doesn't give him a lesser task to do. He doesn't send him back to the school of prophets so that he could learn how to be obedient through something else, through going back to school. God gives him a second chance. So we learn that God is patient with us and that God will give us multiple chances. And then Jonah goes to Nineveh. It is a big city. Jonah walks around for a day, maybe trying to get some courage, maybe trying to get to a specific place where the best place would be to, to give his message. And then after days walking in the city, he starts to preach. And then a miraculous thing happens. It's more miraculous than a big fish swallowing Jonah and keeping him there in his, in, inside for three days. The, the miraculous thing is that the people of the city of Nineveh turns to God. They repent and God saves them. So the second thing we learn is that God can use any means. Anything is possible for God. In this story, the elements listened to God. God commanded the wind and the waves and the storm erupted. The sailors were obedient to God. People that, that, were, that, that didn't know God at first, they, through God's action, turned their lives to Him. The fish was obedient to God. In the end, the Ninevites were obedient to God. The only one in the story that didn't listen immediately was Jonah, the one that was supposed to be listening. The one that... And that knew God already. But God used one stubborn man, one Jonah, to turn a whole city around. So God can also use us. Obedience to God cannot be insignificant. When we are obedient to God, God uses that obedience for the sake of his kingdom. So that is the second thing. 
And then the third thing we learn about God is that God loves all people and animals. Listen to what God says to Jonah in, the, in, in chapter 4, verse 11. It says the following, and, and should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot, who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals. So God says to Jonah, should I not be concerned about all these people? They do not know right from wrong. They do not understand who I am. They don't know. They are ignorant. Can I not be grace, uh, merciful towards them? Can I not have grace for them as well? So the third thing is that God loves people and wants to have grace, mercy on them. The fourth thing we learn about God is that God does not necessarily share my likes and dislikes. It is a typical human thing that, that we would think that our enemies are God's enemies and that our friends are God's friends. The truth is that God loves all people and our role should not be to judge and condemn. We should be willing to carry the love of God to all God's people, to carry the message of Christ to all God's people. So let us recap. What are the things that we could learn about God in this passage? First, God is patient. Secondly, all things are possible for God. Thirdly, God loves all of His creation. And fourth, is that God does not share my likes or dislikes necessarily or my prejudices. So what does the scripture call us to do? If we hate someone in God's creation, we are called to repent. The whole story of Jonah is, is written around the fact that Jonah had to learn that God is not exclusively His God. It is to help us understand that we cannot claim God as our God alone and that we should live in such a way that we are bringing the love of God to people that might not know. We are called to forgive and be agents of God's forgiveness. That we should be an example of how we could let people go, even if they have hurt us immensely. So these things are not easy to do. But remember that God modeled us this for us in the, in the life of Jesus. So think about how Jesus was hanging on the cross and forgiving the people that were hurting him. That were killing him. But also remember that you have the Holy Spirit in you. If you confess the name of Jesus Christ, as we did through the creed this morning, if you say that He is the Son of God, that He is the living Lord, that He has been resurrected, if you confess that with, with your heart, then you have the Holy Spirit that lives in you. And then you are not alone. You have the fruit of the Spirit. You have those things that you need to be able to love people because you have the love of God living in you. So please pray with me this morning and give yourself as a willing servant carrying God's kind love into the world. Ask Him to help you so that you can do this which does not come naturally to us but has been given to us in abundance, love, by God himself. So let us pray. Lord, we want to thank you for your love, for your kindness, for your grace. Lord, we sometimes, uh, we sometimes do not love in such a way that we, that we are honoring your name. 
And therefore, Lord, we ask that you will show us the way, show us how to do this. Give us the ability to love our neighbor, to love the people that, are, that, that we don't easily love, and that they will get to know you because we love them, and they can see you in us. We pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So friends, we will uh, listen to Emmanuel doing the announcements this morning. And then after that, let's sing Heart of Worship as a reminder that it is not about my own wants and needs, but about where God leads us. Let us also sing this as a confession that we struggle with it sometimes and that we want to give over, we want to repent and give over to God again, that we want it to be about Him and not about us. Good morning everyone, my name is Emmanuel and here are the announcements for this week. Everyone is welcome to join our Connect group where we get together on Tuesdays at half past six to learn more about the Bible and to learn from one another. Our Connect group is at 082-076-3419. Live services are still on hold as we await the President's announcements and approval. The Doran Clue Family Church believes to be a special community and we welcome each and every one member of your family and friends and acquaintances to join our communities so that we can grow together in Christ. We also pray for the country and its leaders as we are facing these terrible pandemic times. We pray for all the people affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, both economically and physically. We pray for all our congregations and that may we follow Christ with heart, mind, and spirit. And lastly, we pray for the peaceful repose of the souls of those that passed away due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray that may your soul rest in peace and that may they rest in the, bos in the bosom of Christ. This is all for the announcements for this week. Thank you very much and have an excellent week ahead.
So friends, let's receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may His face shine upon you. And may you know that He is with you. And may you carry Him into the world that so dearly needs His love and grace. May you show them who God is through your actions. And may you experience His, his uh, joy and peace through carrying out His mission to you. Amen. Lord, make His face shine upon you.